Hi everyone, today we will be learning about metal reactivity. So determining the reactivity of metals is by observing how readily different metals would react with oxygen, water and dilute acids and that way you can determine the order of reactivity. First you will be considering oxygen, then water and dilute acids. So anything that reacts with oxygen is quite reactive, water moderately reactive and dilute acids not so reactive. So let's just look at the activity series and you'll be able to find this in the back of your periodic table. It'll be vertical on the back of your periodic table even though it's horizontal here. We have the least reactive such as Au, Platinum, Mercury and here we have the most reactive such as Potassium, Sodium and Calcium. The reactivity of metals can be ranked according to the, their ability to be oxidized, in other words to lose electrons. So the elements at the top of the list, in your list, are easily oxidized than the elements at the bottom. In other words, these are easily oxidized than the metals over there. Most reactive metals are group 1, in other words, potassium and sodium, and group 2, such as calcium and magnesium elements. The most reactive metals are found in the bottom of the right hand side. In other words, if you move to your right hand side towards the bottom, you would find rubidium and cesium there. And these are the most reactive. Group 3 metals are less reactive than group 1 and 2, although some transition metals have similar reactivity to group 3 elements. These are like iron and zinc here. The soft metals at the top of group 4 are less reactive than group 3 metals. So as you can see it's not very, it's not a pattern, it goes step by step. And the least reactive metals are found in the lower periods of the transition metals such as we have gold and silver or in the soft heavy metals such as lead. So you can find them in the bottom periods of the transition metal section. The reactivity of other metals is difficult to relate to their periodic positions without using other information. So with the other metals it's hard to really show a trend but it differs due to different factors. Now let's just take a look at here. This is the periodic table and this is how it looks. So here we have our group 1 elements which are highly reactive. Then you move to your group 2 elements, again quite reactive metals, and around here you would find the very most reactive metals, especially these two here. And then we have our group 8 elements which are the noble gases. Now these are non-metals and they're gases, they're inert, in other words they do not react at all and this is because they have a full valence shell, in other words a full last shell so it doesn't need to react. And then here we would find the very unreactive metals and some of them are inert, especially gold and silver. And this is where you would find them. And the unstable synthetic radioactive elements are around the bottom of the table, so these are radioactive. And here you would find your lanthanides and also your actinides. So these, are, these include many radioactive metals. And these you would be using quite less but these you should know, your group 1, your group 2 elements, your noble gases and also your inert metals. The reactivity and the uses of metals. So now we're going to relate our reactivity and uses. The reactivity of a metal can be corresponded to its use. In other words, its reactivity is dependent or its use is dependent on its reactivity. For example, we have gold and silver being very unreactive, therefore they're used for jewellery. Magnesium, it's very reactive and produces a bright light when reacting with oxygen. So if you have done that experiment in school where you show, um, burnt magnesium strip, you would see a very bright light coming. 
used in flash bulbs, fireworks and petrol tanks. And we have aluminium which is added in the steel making process to prevent the steel remaining in its molten state. Aluminium oxide, it floats to the surface for removal and it is used for house gutter, gutters as it forms a surface passivating layer. Now zinc, it's used as a sacrificial anode to protect steel structures so it, uh, it corrodes instead of the steel and it sacrifices itself, that's why it's called a sacrificial anode. It is attached to the hulls of ships and collars of propellers. Its reactivity is used to protect iron and steel and this is called galvanizing. So you have heard about galvanizing iron and steel, well it's zinc um, galvanizing the iron and the steel. Copper is used for water pipes due to the low reactivity with oxygen and water. Now we have gold which is quite um, low reactivity, it's actually the least reactive of metals. It's mainly used for jewellery and ornaments. It's used for electrical circuits as well, mainly because it doesn't tarnish, because it doesn't react with oxygen and also because it's very good with conducting electricity. And used for space exploration as it is a great reflector of infrared radiation and was used mainly for like Apollo uh, explorations and stuff. Now calcium, it's highly reactive, it's in the second group and it's usually added to steels to remove traces of oxygen, sulfur and phosphorus because the calcium would react with all of them and remove them. Used in vacuum tubes to combine any traces of oxygen. We have titanium which is used in holding tanks and pipes and converts seawater to fresh water. So because it doesn't tarnish. And it's also used in factories that produce acid and it resists corrosion. Because of these two points, it's, um, because of its resistance to corrosion, it's mainly used for acid factories as well as for sea tanks. Now let's just review back to what we learned. We learned about reactivity and the uses of metals. So we considered a few metals including titanium, sodium, calcium and gold. And let's just look at some questions that may come from this section. We have question 6. Now it's a multiple choice question. The most reactive metal in the presence of dilute hydrochloric acid is which one of these? Now let's just look at them. We have gold, iron, tin and calcium. Gold doesn't react at all so you can't uh, call it a reactive metal. And then we have iron which is moderately reactive and tin which is also moderately reactive. Now calcium here it is in the second group so if you remember second group metals are quite reactive so indeed calcium is very reactive making calcium the correct answer. So option D is our correct answer. Now option 7, place the elements magnesium, lead, iron and silver in the order, correct order of the most to least active. Now just looking at them, we know that silver is an inert metal so it doesn't react at all. Then we have magnesium, lead and iron. Now magnesium is in our second group so it's quite reactive. Lead and iron, we know iron is more reactive than lead because lead is some, somewhat less reactive. So let's just look at the options we have. Option A is incorrect because we know that iron is more reactive than lead. Option B is incorrect because we know that iron is more reactive than silver because silver is an inert metal. Option D is the wrong order because silver is not reactive than lead, iron or magnesium. It's supposed to be the other way around, which is C because magnesium is the most reactive, then comes iron, lead and silver. Therefore, this is the correct answer. So C is the correct answer. Now with 8, it says to identify the more active metal from each of the following pairs. Now note it says identify, so you just have to name it. You don't have to give detail into it. 
So we have sodium and magnesium. Which of them are from the first group? Sodium is from the first group, so sodium is your answer. Because it only has one electron to lose, while magnesium, it has two electrons to lose. Question B, which is uh, magnesium and calcium. So which one of them is lower down the table? Because we know they're from the same group, but if you move lower, then that's the more reactive. Now we know calcium is lower down the table, so calcium is the answer. C is potassium and tin. Now potassium is from group one, and tin is a transition metal. So clearly potassium is more reactive, so potassium would be your answer. Now question nine, it says to describe the changes in the activity of metals across a period of the periodic table. So across a period means this way, horizontally moving from the left to the right. When you're describing it, you just simply say what happens, it's decreasing. Because the first group, elements from the first group, which is towards your left, are the most reactive, and elements towards your right are the least reactive. So it's decreasing be down a group of the periodic table. In other words, vertically going down, vertically. When it's going from the top to the bottom, it's actually increasing. So just stating what you have to say. Now question 10. Why are more expensive copper pipes used for carrying hot water than cheaper iron pipes? Now you just have to simply give a reason. Iron will corrode slowly in hot water. We know that iron is quite reactive with water, whereas copper will not because copper is corrosion resistant. So this is our answer and it's quite simple. Now in this section, what we covered was metals and their reactivity and how that reactivity depends upon their use. So we did consider a few um, metals. We considered calcium, titanium, iron, gold, and many more. And we closely looked at how their reactivity and their use are interlinked.